Hi guys, welcome to Silly News Live. I have a very exciting show for you today. We are going to go back to the basics and talk about some of the few things that cause issues when you're sewing, like the bobbin, threading. It sounds so simple, but quite often that's the main reason you might have issues. So welcome, if you've never been here before, I'm Angela Wolf, welcome to your show. I am a brand ambassador for Brother and this show is sponsored by Brother, so I appreciate that. So of course, I'm gonna be using Brother products. All right, you guys, pop in. If you haven't been here, say where you're from. You never know, your neighbor might be sewing next to you. And we have people from all over the world join us, which is awesome. So before we get rolling, I just need to know that you can hear me okay. So I see Glenda, you're popping in. Glenda, can you hear me okay? Because if you can, just give me a little heads up. Technology. You never know if it's going to work or not. Great. I see Yvette rolling in. We got the someone from the UK. All right. You know, there are a ton of people from the UK that watch this show. And you know what? I thank you guys. And so we have a great community of sewers. Hi, Donna. All right. I see you all rolling in. I don't see anybody say that you can't hear me. So I think we'll roll. So today's plan is I'm going to show you some things about the bobbin, how to wind it correctly, how I'm going to be using the Brother Luminaire and the Brother Dream Machine. But this will relate to pretty much, well, let's just say quite a few machines. So don't feel like it's just select for that. But you know, something occurred to me the other day. I was talking to a friend who recently, and I will keep her unnamed. I'll link there because she might be here live too. Um, she upgraded to the Luminaire uh, from the Quattro. And the machines are very similar, but there's so much more. And I think a few things can get overwhelming. And I thought, you know what? Why don't we just start with the basics? And then with these shows, we'll just keep rolling along with a few more tutorials. I will try to answer your questions if I know the answer. I love to sew. I use a lot of features on the sewing machine, but by no means do I know everything. So everything I'm going to share in the show is my own opinion. If you don't like it, it's okay. But just so you know, this isn't like a technical thing. <laughs> All right, we've got Bangladesh rolling in, Pennsylvania. Well, let's get rolling. When you wind your bobbin, first of all, how many of you have more than one sewing machine? I know that sounds so funny, but when I asked this question one time on one of our giveaways, I think there was, I may have to look up the stats before tomorrow's show and I'll give you the exact, but over 70% of you had more than one machine. Over 60% had more than two machines. So does that mean that you're, you never get rid of the old machine? or you have machines that do different things. There's so many different options nowadays. So just out of curiosity, how many sewing machines do you have? And do you actually use them all? Well, here's the problem. If you have a whole bunch of different sewing machines, you might have different bobbins. You might have metal, you might have plastic. There's a lot that are plastic and guess what? There are a lot of different sizes. Did you know that? Well, what about pre-wound bobbins for embroidery? I use those all the time they come in different sizes. So there's a lot to, to keep in mind when you're getting ready, going from machine to machine. Of course, you probably already know that if you've used all your machines, but I'm just curious to see how many sewing machines you have. I have quite a few, but that's my job. So I think that that, we'll just leave it at that. Michelle says she's got two machines and one serger. And Bonnie has five and she uses all of them. Okay, Kathy says she has more. <laughs> Glenda, you have two and more in storage, two sergers. Okay, Linda, so far you are bringing it home. Seven machines, holy cow. Hi, Don, great to see you. <laughs> We've got a lot with two and four and five, holy cow. So to my friends that always wonder that you just should have one sewing machine, it's kind of like my husband and fishing. Can you possibly just have one type of rod or reel? We won't even get into the lures because that would kind of go with our embroidery designs and thread and that stuff. <laughs> I see Naomi says she has from Alberta. Welcome. She has two machines and she uses two. The others have specific projects. All right. So the basic of the basic is just make sure that you use whatever bobbin you need for that machine. Do not. And I know this sounds so simple. But I know people have asked me this in the past, and I always thought, well, I would just think that that's a no-brainer, but it's not. Do not mix these up. 
You keep them with whatever machine. There's a reason that they're that size. There's a reason that they're this way. So just don't mix them up. All right, what about winding the bobbin? I, I tried to find a couple of mine. Every once in a while, mine ends up going a little chaotic. I just want to make sure you guys I'm not freezing. <laughs> Hi, Marianne. Great to see you. I'm back. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm switching cameras, and I'm going to go take you to the machine and show you some tips for winding the bobbin. All right? Hold on one second here. I think Our... we are live on there. Make sure that you can hear that one. All right, so. I'm bringing you there just a sec. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Okay. Give me just a heads up on the second camera that you can hear me, okay? All right, here is the Brother Dream Machine. This one, make sure I'm not echoing. You guys hear me okay? Hold on one second. A little echo. Okay, we good now? Better? I think the echo's gone. All right, so this is the Brother Dream Machine. What I want to bring you over here for is, look at this, the thread rack. This one I screwed together yet. This, it needs a little tightening. But this is where I put all of my threads when I'm threading. Right here, this is where you put your thread for winding your bobbin. And I usually just leave the bobbin thread on there, just like this. And you can see I have embroidery thread in here, but one thing I'm gonna talk about is what's the difference of having your thread here versus here, and which one can cause a problem more often than not. All right, and here is obviously where you wind your bobbin. So you can see I have my bobbin. It just snaps in place like that. This is what turns it on and off. And I already have this set up on a different machine, so let's go over to the Luminaire. All right, so I just turned this machine on. Click OK. Please, I love that. It says, please wait a while. Like, we're so impatient, right? All right, I'm going to make sure you're nice and steady and that you can see me OK without getting seasick. That's important. <laughs> Deborah says, it must be Groundhog Day. You got to love technology, right? OK. <clears throat> So this box, if you have the Brother Luminaire, you might have this box that came with it. This opens up. Well, you're not, you wouldn't, might. You do have this box. Let's see if I can just, here you go. And what this is, is the thread rack that goes with the Brother Luminaire. I love this because it can just get put away and put back out. It just flips around like this, and you have two little spools. So quite often, you guys might hear me talk about using two spools of thread to do top stitching, things like that. Well, this is what I do. I put this up here. But I find that I use this spool almost all the time versus this one right here. Okay? So let's go back to the bobbin here. I have a lot of little tools out here just so I had them ready for you to see. We've got thread spools. Look at all these different sizes. We're going to get into that in a minute. But let me just throw this up here. All right. One big no-no is if you have a bobbin and the bobbin is almost empty and you're, you decide, you know what, I need to add more so you add a different color because you don't want to waste this thread or you just add more color to this, that's a big no-no for a couple of reasons. First of all, our machines, many of them, will let us know when the bobbin is low. So if you're adding more thread to this, you might run out of bobbin thread because you added another color, because you still have this much left. And the machine is not going to let you know when your bobbin is low. Does that make sense? And I know, I've done that before. We all have when we're in a hurry, but that's just a little tip there. So what about, I'm going to bring over all my little bobbins here. All right. I keep them in this beautiful little case. <laughs> Thanks to one of you lovelies that made this for me. All right, 
I have black, I have a few different colors. One little tip is sometimes I will actually put these on the thread rack with the spool of thread so I know that they're always together. But you know what that requires, you need to purchase more of these spools, which you know what, they're not very expensive. And I find that I just buy a whole batch of them to go with whatever new machine I have. And that way they're available. I can fill them with the colors that I use all the time. This one here is for my PQ1500, I already know that. And the rest of mine fit both of my brother machines, the Brother Luminaire and the Brother Dream Machine. Okay, I thought I had one in here that was kind of bad. This one's kind of bad, okay? If that's even a term that you wanna hear, kind of bad. What does that mean? Look closely at this. See if I can bring this close enough. It is, maybe you can see better on this side. Do you see how this side over here is wound much more has a lot more thread over here going than this side. It's something so simple, but it will actually not be a good thing for when you're sewing. So I'm just going to show you how to wind a bobbin the way I do it, and then you let me know, just uh, hopefully if you can't see this, I will make sure I stop for a second. But regardless of what thread you're using, now this is just universal thread, if you're using a spool that's thick like this, I always end up using it in the spool racks back here. Just gonna put this up and bring this around. So you can see all that. Now what about this? You can also use this for threading your bobbin because if you look closely, the bobbin is going to go through here. It even tells you there's a guide, you can't mess it up. But you know what can get messed up? is if for some reason you don't wrap it around this point right here tight enough. And you know, I'm a little bit, um, well, considering that the bobbin can screw up your sewing more than anything, I do a double check here. So let me show you what I do. Actually, I'm just gonna put it on here so you guys don't get confused. Here's a spool. This goes at the end. Look what happens there. This is wider than my spool. This is very important. You should really choose the whole purpose of the spool. It, a couple things. One, if you're using this kind, maybe there's little clips in here, little snips where the thread gets stuck. We're gonna talk about that more in a minute, but you want that to cover it. But if you're using something, say, this wide, and you're trying to get the thread to come off nicely, it's not gonna happen. It's going to keep breaking. So I, one of the first things I would suggest especially if you have any problems with your thread breaking or winding the bobbin, is finding a very small spool cap. There's even one that's smaller than this somewhere around here. And make sure that it fits on here, but it's not wider. Quite often, I just slide this in place and it doesn't move and I leave it. Other times, I put it up through here. Just like that. All right, let me go back to the pink one here. If you're using embroidery thread, Trying to find one of my smaller spool caps. I know I had it here. Goodness gracious. I put too much out here for you and now I can't find it. This is what I love having this top part for because I can put all my goodies up here. This, by the way, is if you have a problem with your embroidery thread sliding off, you can use this. All right, I have no idea what I did with that spool cap. So since I don't have it, plan B is that I'm going to use this the same way I normally do. Put it down through here, up and around. Oops, hold on one sec. Here we go. Okay, then it goes through this top part here. And this is the part I was mentioning. You can see that closely. Your thread goes around it backwards like this, but give it a tug. There, that's a tension. There's tension in there to hold that. Now, I also do one more extra thing. So let me just cut my thread. That is a thread cutter in case you didn't know that. Let's see, I don't have my glasses on, so let's see if I can do this without them or I'll be grabbing them. There's a little hole in the bobbin. Just punch your thread right through that. Can you see that hole right there? Okay, cheaters are coming out. Here we go. Ah. 
that helps a lot. Good lighting, pair of cheaters you can never go wrong when you're trying to thread these little itty bitty holes. All right, so then I put this in place. Now, this is what will tell the machine that I want to do fill the bobbin, okay? Now, look up here, see if I can do this without twisting you too much. Hold on one sec. This is not on every machine. This is only on the Brother Luminaire. But do you see this right here? When I first got this, I thought, well, that's cool. It just tells you how fast you're doing the, <laughs> that's not, it has nothing to do with speed. This is how full you want the bobbin to be. So if you're doing a quick project, like say hemming a pair of jeans or something like that, you don't need a lot of thread. You can actually put this on the lower amount. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, five settings. I'll put it on the second amount just to show you. Go back to this screen here. You see that okay? I can never tell from the glares if you guys can see or not. So this is the speed of how fast you wanna wind your bobbin. Now I know we are all speed demons, but I recommend leaving it in the middle because if something goes wrong, your thread falls off, your bobbin, something gets screwed up, it's much easier to stop it when it's going half speed, okay? Then you have okay or start. So I'm just gonna click start and then I'm gonna stop it. I can stop it up here or on the screen and cut this excess thread up at the top. Now, one more thing, if you, if you notice that your thread is you're thinking, oh, this isn't quite working. It should automatically fill the bobbin from top to bo bottom. Top to bobbin, oh my goodness, they bobbin 10 times fast. <laughs> from top to bottom, evenly. If you notice that that's not working, then stop and do it again. And that one's winding just fine. If you're really having problems and you're really nervous because maybe you're using a really light, Flimsy, I would say flimsy isn't the correct word, but you're using some embroidery thread that you're gonna make some lace with, which you know is my favorite. And you're winding the bobbin with this. This is a lot thinner and this can get a little crazy. Sometimes what I will do is I will actually hold my finger right here. I'm not giving it a lot of tension, I'm just holding it to make sure that it stays nice and tight. Just another tip. I use that quite often if I'm using maybe the Brother NS80 or a machine that isn't quite as high tech as the Brother Luminaire. It's just an extra protection. When you're finished filling it, cut your thread and you're ready to put that in the machine. All right, what about threading the machine? This is another one that can really cause some problems if for some reason you do a couple things incorrectly. Well, first of all, this isn't your fault, but what if you have, you decide you wanna use a big spool of thread, like a serger thread, something like that. If your machine has something like this, these are cones, these are for your cones, you just put this in place, put your cone on top, it keeps it in place so it doesn't fall off, it doesn't get wobbly. All right, what about embroidery thread? This is brother thread, brother brand, and I have had luck using it up here, or see if I can get you just a smidge closer, or right here. Either one is fine. And when I put it here, I don't even use a thread cap because it stays in place. It comes off of the spool evenly. See how it just comes off the spool. It doesn't get stuck. A couple things you want to be aware of is that if your embroidery thread has this little thing that opens, this is where you can actually store your thread. See how it keeps it nice and tight? If you start embroidering and this is open, you do run the risk of when this is coming off that the thread gets kind of loose and gets stuck inside of here. Okay, so that's one warning. All right, here's your other big one. This here. Now, uh, this has nothing to do with the brand. I'm just talking about the spool. This is not a brother brand, but this is a spool of embroidery thread. Now, this looks a little bit like a hot mess, <laughs> as my little nephew Carter would say, who is two, hot mess. This is a hot mess. So when you go to use this, if I, if I have this in place down here, all right, I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see. What happens is, is as the spool is unwinding, do you see 
how sometimes this can get stuck underneath each other. The thread, I'm pulling right here, but it's not even coming off. It, it pulls just loosely. I'm gonna show you a tip for this. I recommend uh, go, moving on to a newer version of your thread if it gets pretty low and it's causing problems, but I do have a solution and some of you have been in my classes before and have seen this. So let me know if you've been in this class and you thought this was, you thought I was crazy probably when I told you to do this, but here we go. See how much better it comes off the spool if it comes out like this versus like this? Big difference, right? So you can thread your machine just like you would normally do. And for those of you that don't know you have a needle threader, you do. You probably do on most of your machines. So they're all different. Let's see if I can just get that down just a little bit. I have a video on YouTube to show you how to use the needle threader if you don't know, but it goes down, around. I usually give it a little tug, cut the thread, touch the button, which is over here. Voila, and we are threaded. All right, so I'm gonna just bring this a little bit lower so you have a little better view. How's that? I need an extra set of hands, right? <laughs> Don't we all wish that we could have like an extra day, extra set of hands, you name it. All right, so this is ready to go. Now, I'm not going to start sewing, but I'm going to just show you on this spool what I do. As it's embroidering, this is for embroidery, it would be pretty difficult to do this while it's sewing. But as it's embroidering, instead of it pulling off the spool and tugging at the spool, if I really want to use this thread because I'm just die hard and don't want to get rid of it and I'm like, I just have a little bit more of my project left, I have to finish this. I will actually hold my finger out here and then, and then let it embroider. I'm not using this for any tension. I'm just using this as troubleshooting for a spool that has gotten so low it's causing problems. Now this spool in particular, if you notice, is kind of curved at the end. There are other spools that are straight across and those cause, those cause some major problems when you get low. So I'll just hold my finger here, let it embroider. Is it fun to do? Nope, but it solves the problem if I just absolutely don't wanna get rid of that thread. Okay, and one more tip here for when you go to put your bobbin in place. If you look on the front of your machine, whatever machine you have, all of the brother machines have a little signal here. They might say one, two, three, that might be numbered or something like that. This just pops into place. You wrap it around, cut the thread, put the cover back in place and you're ready to go. There's no need to bring the thread up from the bottom. You just start sewing. And there you are, there you have it. All right, the last few things on the top here that I wanna point out is if you have your spool up here, just make sure, see, I already closed that one. Let's try this one. Uh oh, there, that's exactly what I was trying, not on purpose, but that's what I was gonna show you. Do you see how that thread is so lightweight that it got stuck underneath of the spool? Well, if that happens while you're sewing, this is what happens. I totally did not do that on purpose, but that's what I was kind of trying to show you. That's bad. So if you have any problems with your needle breaking, thread breaking, things like that, check your thread. It could be something as simple as that. So for this spool that's really loose, I would probably use, let's see if I can find it. I had it here, I showed it just a second ago, that little uh, vent, it's like a little weave that goes over it that holds it in place. One more thing is, on here, make sure your thread goes up and then you thread it. But what I like to do is I'll put it right in this clip first. See if I can do this with one hand. There we go. I put it in that clip and then I thread it. It just keeps it nice and organized, not all over the map. Okay, here's this spool and I will take this back over do you have any questions on that? You guys can feel free to ask questions. I'm gonna just set you down for a sec over here and go back to the Q&A section so I can see what you're saying.
All right, we are back. <laughs> so that is your very basic threading. And there's a reason for each part, as you can see. So this spool of thread here, a little hard to do and hold the camera and show you this at the same time. So this is my spool. Again, let's see if this one has a thing that opens at the bottom. No, it doesn't. So, But there is a little spot in here that you can just slide your thread in. Keeps it nice and organized on your racks. Now, if you look at all my thread racks, you would notice that mine aren't so organized. So a lot of times I don't take the time to do that. But here is that weave I was telling you about. And if you put your thread, this is like the best thing ever. I use this for serger thread a lot too. So slide this over your spool. <laughs> I lost my thread. Here we go. Just like that. So then once you put this on the machine, your thread will just come through here and you don't have to worry about it coming off the bottom. This works great on the 10 needle as well. Okay. So let me just peek and see. Jane says, sometimes, I got part of your question, Jane. Sometimes when winding the bobbins, I get the, the what? <laughs> the rat's nest? Is that what you're going to say? That's always a pain if that's what you're talking about. Thread net. Thread net, Pam. Thank you. I was just thinking about you the other day, Pam. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> After I've been traveling to so many events, I went to a couple brother events recently. We had a great time. And I met so many people there and at some of the expos. It's been great. So it's nice to be home for the summer and then I can catch up with all of you online. All right. So let me just see what other questions you have. And then I have a few more things. Birdie is on the road back home to Denver. Hi, Birdie. Great to see you. Okay. Floretta says, my machine came with clear embroidery thread. Should I use this all the time instead of regular thread in the bobbin? All right, Floretta, let me ask you a question. Now there's many different kinds of thread. So let me just, hold on, let me see if it's this stuff. Hold on one second. I'm gathering stuff from the studio. There we go, we're back. <laughs> I always have to laugh when I go walk around the studio to <laughs> to get something because I just have to make sure that wherever I'm taking you, the studio is somewhat clean. All right, excuse me. I'm still getting over a pretty bad cold from last week. Are you talking about this stuff here that came with your machine? This is really thin, really lightweight. This is great for the bobbin if you are going to use embroidery. Like for embroidery, it's great. But sometimes in embroidery, you want the bobbin to match. And in that case, I would use the same thread. Now for sewing, that's a whole different thing. For sewing, all right, let's just grab one of these. This is one of my sewing. Says I use this color to sew my jeans. It's just a regular universal thread. I will use the same thread in the bobbin as I do in the top. So the clear thread, the thin thread, if this is the same stuff you're talking about, there's a purpose for this. So my question to you was, are you using this for embroidery or just regular sewing? That's the big thing. Uh-oh, Phyllis said hers is broke. Phyllis, is your thread, your automatic threader broken? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, KL Swift, thanks for letting me know it wasn't focusing on some of the things. Sorry about that. All right, so automatic threader comes on a lot of machines, by the way, not just this brother, this beautiful machine here, which is one of my faves. Dream machine it comes on, but even the NS80, a lot of the machines that you that you find at Amazon, those all have automatic threaders. They're a little bit different. I have videos on YouTube to show you how to use those, but the good news is if you break it, it's not very expensive to fix it. I'm only speaking from experience on the Brother Dream Machine. Any of the others, I cannot speak for, but you guys have probably heard the story. I had Colin and Cody, my little nephews over here, and we were embroidering. 
Actually, I think Colin was the only one there at the time. He was embroidering his hoodie. He was five. I always like to tell you that story in case you have nieces, nephews, kids, grandkids, whatever. They love playing on the machines. They think it's the best tablet ever. Are you kidding? <laughs> but I told him, I showed him how to thread the machine. And I said, now you have to put the thread through the needle. It has an automatic threader, but it's broken. So one day he asked me how expensive the machine was. And I said, well, it's a little bit much. And he says, for a five-year-old, more than I my Disney trip, which at that time, I think he had $10 saved up. And I said, yes, a little bit more than the Disney trip. So he got real serious. Then about 15 minutes went by and he kept changing colors and threading and I'm helping him and I'm letting him thread the needle because his eyes are better than mine. <laughs> and then he says, very seriously, if this machine is that much, I think I would get that needle threader thing fixed. <laughs> so I was humiliated into getting it fixed. And I think it was, and this isn't just because I'm a brand ambassador for brother. I went and got it fixed. I think it was like under $70. So I wasn't sure how much it was going to cost. In fact, I think it was under 50, but I purchased some things in the store. I can never get in and out of there without buying something, right? Marcy says, wet the needle and thread goes in easier. Well, that's okay, Marcy, and that is a tip, but you want to know another one where you don't have to get the thread wet, which is kind of better in my opinion. My opinion, that's it. Take the thread. And take your scissors, see if I can get this to focus on you, and cut your thread on an angle. It's a magic trick. It makes the thread, I know the thread is only like microscopically small, but if you cut it on an angle, it gives that little tip to get through the needle. That's a good tip. And yes, we've all wet the, wet the thread probably trying to get it through the needles. But anyways, it's just something easier that you don't have to, to suck on the thread, right? <laughs> Kathy says she loves the, the, the threader. Pam says thread nets are great for stopping thread pooling. That is definitely, and that happens a lot with rayon thread. I totally agree. Hey, Teresa, my Comic-Con fans, I'm waving back at you. Thank you for being here. And <laughs> Pam says she's copping her way to a six-pack abs. I love that. So for those of you that have been following me online for the last few weeks, I do my live show every Wednesday and I showed up even though I wasn't feeling well. And last week was a bit scary. I never thought about thinking so positively that I was coughing my way to six to a six pack abs. Pam, I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right. Do you guys have any more questions on that? I'm going to point out a few more things on the machine. Before I do that, I want to bring up something from brother that you might not have noticed. I haven't been on here for a few weeks. Last week, I was going to go live with you guys. Let me see if I can find the right screen here. It's not sharing. Okay, hold on one second. I want to show you what has been going, what has been going on on Brother, which is some really cool things if you're looking for some fantastic sewing projects. All right, <clears throat> there's one. Here is, just for your info, you go to blog.brothersews.com. And I have that up here for you. Fantastic. All right, here we go. This is the link for you. And I think now I can share this. There we go. Sometimes the internet only likes to use a certain browser. I guess it just depends what day of the week it is. All right, so let me bring you up here. So this is blog.brothersos.com. And I just want to show you a few fun things on here. So first of all, Emily has this really fun project, the binding attachment for the cover stitch. So many of you have asked me about that. I don't have this attachment at this point. So I was so excited to see that she had this and she's using it for this adorable top. How fun is this? So she shows you how to put this on. It's quite the contraption, huh guys? <laughs> and then she shows how to run it through the double cover stitch. Now, 
the double cover stitch for those of you guys that have not uh, been oh there's a video for it too awesome so for those of you that have not used it, it does like the double cover so it, it looks like sportswear which is fantastic and you've seen emily here on the show before she's a brand ambassador for brother she does the cutest kid stuff so that's on there now i think you might like that i wanted to point that out and wait for my website to go here all right we've got a couple quick tips i have a video on here these are really short videos so if you have an attention span of like 10 seconds that's all you need <laughs> maybe a minute of grouping embroidery designs i showed you guys this on a live show before but some of you asked for some more details on that so there's a quick video right here and if you're trying to add a whole bunch of things into that huge area and you want to move them all at the same time or you can group them ungroup them there's so much you can do there so i just wanted to point that out and let's see what joanne's tip is i know joanne was under with the flu this i think we all got it via the internet oh yeah this was super cute this is laura's personal clutch for mother's day which by the way happy mother's day to you all that was just a few days ago and I hope you had a wonderful, relaxing day. But this thing was so cute. I always follow Laura on Instagram because she's got the best photos. So she gives you a lot of directions here for how to follow along. And she shows you how to make this adorable bag. Okay, all free on the blog. Scroll back and I just want to see what the free embroidery of the month is for you. There's that scarf. Remember, we worked on that, that crazy yarn scarf. Here we go, foot of the month fabric. Is that the new one or the? There we go, free design, floral tote with embroidery pocket. There's a lot more things back here, by the way. A couple of these I haven't seen yet. That handy dandy towel, I love that from Mr. Domestic. I recognize that fabric, very cool. I actually have a batch of his fabric here waiting to sew a top. I was going to do it a few months ago and my life just got a little hectic so it's on the bucket list for this this month actually so this is super cute and joanne shows you a lot of details she gives excellent directions here so if you're looking for another tutorial how to choose your hoop size she's making an applique she's got a fill going on now that's cool so many of you have asked how to use this very very cool Okay, so that's on there. And then one more thing on brother, in case you are in the, you've got the bug for Mother's Day, even though Mother's Day was last week, you can still get on this one, 0% financing for 60 months. This is their ad for right now on all of these machines. So if you'd like to see this, I can email it to you or it's on their website. All right, let's bring this back down. I see a couple of questions popping up. First off, I think, Phyllis wants to know, will I be coming to Quilt Fest? Yes, I will be. I will be there with all brands. Again, as always, which is super fun. Uh, they have a great booth if you haven't been there before. That's in, um, I believe it's over Halloween this year. Maybe October 31st through November 2nd. And if you've never been to Quilt Fest, now I haven't been to some of the others. I might be going next year. There's a little hint there. But for now, the Houston Quilt Fest, it's huge. There's so many opportunities to play on the new machines, look at beautiful quilts. Now, you all know that I'm not like a huge, I didn't mean to add the like word there. I'm not a huge quilter, but I absolutely love quilting as long as it goes on my body because I don't want, I want, if I'm going to spend all that time, I have to wear it. So I might look like a walking quilt or walking bedspread. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I have to say these quilts do not look like anything that I've seen in the past. They're beautiful pieces of art. In fact, last year I brought a separate camera because I filled my whole memory on my cell phone taking pictures. I would actually try to go there before the event opened because when I'm working, I can't exactly leave the booth and go take photos. I'm telling you, it's worth every second to go there. I, I recognize many of your names here that you've been to the quilt show. So if you have enjoyed it or if you have any advice for somebody thinking of going, be sure to leave your comment because I think it's awesome. And yes, so Phyllis, I will be there which is awesome i hope to see you there have you used the binder attachment can you give us a demo on this i have not used it yet pam not at this point yeah so 
I can't really give you much tip, many tips on it, but I'm going to watch her video to see how it works. I know that in the past when I've used the binder on the cover stitch machine, you have to start and end in a seam. So say I'm going to do this tank top right here. I would start and stop without this side seam open because it's really difficult to wrap it over. So if you look at many of your swimsuits or tank tops, quite often maybe in the neck edge, there'll be a spot right here where you, they started the binding, attached it and ended and then sewed the shoulder seam together. So there's a few things you have to do for sewing garments that make it a little bit different, but I'll be sure to watch her video and see what's going on with the new one. I haven't tried it yet. All right, Jane wants to know what causes a loosely wound bobbin? Happens to me once in a while. Well, Jane, a couple things. That part on the top of the machine, I don't know what machine you're using, but usually you have to wind your thread around that once or twice to give it that nice tension. So you need to have tension. You can't just have your thread coming off your spool and going onto your bobbin. You need some, just a little bit of tension to make sure that it goes on evenly. And if you have to do use your hand to help guide it, do that. Most of the machines usually can just do it on its own. But usually the cause of that is not having enough tension on the thread. So if your machine has a disc, so for example, this machine right here, see if I can just, I don't know if it'll focus on there, but I'm talking about this right here. So if your thread has to go around that once or twice to give it some good tension, that's what I'm referring to there, if that makes sense. All right, let's see a couple more questions. I'm gonna let you guys go. Tomorrow I have a really fun show planned for you. I'm going to be doing needle felting on silk dupe oni, which is great. All right, Glenda says, does your thread cutter have metal that touches the skin on the finger? Oh, my thread cutter? No, it does not. It's all plastic. It's somewhere. Oh, you know where it is, Glenda? I just got back from a fishing trip. It's in my fishing bag because I was using it for cutting fishing line. No, there's no metal that touches your hand. There's Velcro at the bottom and plastic. I'll bring it on the live show tomorrow if you're going to be on. Thank you for asking that. We got Jane in from Pennsylvania. Phyllis says she usually volunteers at the show. Awesome. That's very nice. That's a great way to get into a show at a very economical price, right? You have to do a little bit of work, but it's worth it. <laughs> it takes two days to get to the vendor hall. I totally agree. Phyllis says, I still don't know how to download designs on the embroidery machine. All right. You want me to show you a quick tutorial on that? This is pretty simple because I was actually just doing that right before we started live. So let me show you. Well, which part? Because I already have the designs in my USB stick. So I can take you from that point forward. And then maybe in the show in two weeks, I'll make sure I do a tutorial on downloading designs, maybe off of iBroidery or something. But let me show you once you have it to a USB. Come on over and let me show you. All right, can you see okay? I just have to make sure that you can still hear me because my volume is over here. All right, you guys can hear me okay? I'll talk louder. So on the machine, you go to embroidery. This is my USB stick that I've taken designs from the machine. I mean, from my computer and you put it in the side over here. You have two options on this machine. All right, go back to here. And on this machine, this particular machine, this is very similar to the Dream Machine. There's a pocket right there. In that pocket, you have options. You can take your designs from an SD card, Wi-Fi, which is awesome. And I have to set mine up all the way. Cindy started to set me up and I didn't finish. Or things that have been saved to your machine. And this icon right here is for your USB. So when I click that, it shows me any designs that I have in this machine. Let's see what I have going on here. I have all these file folders. I don't know what I have in here. Let's see. Okay, so here's the design that I saved onto the USB and I just touch that and it brings it onto the screen. I click set. 
and I'm ready to embroider. This is that cool purple top that you guys have seen me wear. I'll probably be wearing that tomorrow. So that's as simple as it is. You go back, I'll do it one more time. You click the home button, on down, click embroidery, click your pocket. In the pocket, you have options to take designs that you've already saved to the machine. There's your USB, an SD card, or Wi-Fi. Now, of course, this really depends on what machine that you have. So, all right, guys, coming back over. One more thing I wanted to talk about is the manuals for the machines. Now, some machines have manuals, some do not. This machine here, the manual's built into it. But if you're like me, you kind of want a book and you want to be able to flip to and from pages that are really important. Maybe there's so much on the machine that you might not even realize some things that you could be doing, which is why we try to help you with videos and things like that. But one thing that you can do, uh, yeah, Virginia, I meant Wi-Fi. I don't know. What did I say? Wi-Fi. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what you can do, though, is you can go to the Brother website and download the manual. You can download it. I, I leave it on my tablet and I can just flip through it to go. If I want to learn something new, you'd be surprised at some of the things that machine does that you might not even realize. Another thing is you can just print it off. There's quite a few pages and you don't have to print the whole thing. Just print the parts that you really that are important to you. Maybe there's a whole section on embroidery. Print that. You can take it to one of the office supply stores. They will bind it for you. I have a little binder myself that I always put stuff in binders. So get creative on that. The Dream Machine 2 has a, has a beautiful manual, which I love. I think it has post-it notes all over it <laughs> so I can remind myself. Yeah. Terry says she printed her manual. and she's So Terry, when you printed your manual, did you bind it or did you just leave it with a big clip? Just curious. And Pam says, thanks for doing that demo is there's nothing worse than when you first that start hitting that brick wall when you're so excited to sew that first design. That is so true. So true. All right, guys, I think I'm just making sure I'm not missing any of your questions. Yes, Arnell, needle felting. That is tomorrow on my usual behind the scenes show where we're going to be needle felting, not just little flowers that we always talk about, but I'm going to be doing fabric. Yes, Silk Dupioni. <laughs> Terry says, she's been sewing for years and still learned something new from this class. Hey, thanks, Terry. And Phyllis, I hope that helped. If not, ask me more tomorrow when I see you. I think I've got all of your questions. So I see some more questions going on here. I've got some exciting news on tomorrow's show as well. First off, I'd like to thank Brother for having the show. This is great. It gives me an opportunity to show you things on the machines. If there's anything that you would like, the next Sewing News Live is in two weeks, assuming that this flu thing goes away now for good. <laughs> the schedule won't be changing again. So in two weeks, I'll be on here. And if there's something specific that you would like to see or you would like to learn, you can always leave me a private message or message me or leave a comment below and I'll see it later. But as a brand ambassador, I love working on their product and I thank them for sponsoring this show. So. Linda wants to know, okay, one more quick question. The rest of these I'll bring to tomorrow. How do you wash and dry silk dupioni? Hmm. Uh, you know, I have to be honest. Usually I dry clean it because of the fact that, well, it has a lot of color that can come out. I haven't really tried to wash and dry it. I have one top that I did that with, and I wasn't very happy with it. So I take it to the dry cleaners. It just works. I don't dry clean too many things, but that's what I use for silk du dupioni. I see. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Diamond. Thanks, Don. I saw one. Somebody asked this. Oh, Judy says she bought her manuals online, and they are. I'm absolutely having a brain dead. They're bound, but I didn't catch like what it was. So thanks. <laughs> Great to see you, Molly. Did you see that uh, what I was using here? Yeah. Your little snap trays. Mm -hmm. I love this. This was like the coolest gift. She made this in different sizes. 
Isn't this fun? It's leather. It's embroidered. Super fun. Anyways, I love these little snap trays because you know what I do is I lay them in my drawer. And then when I'm trying to put a bunch of stuff in there, I put pins in there, bobbins. So best gift ever. But Molly, I think that you might recognize this. <laughs> she definitely used your, your pattern. <laughs> and she did see that. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. Have a wonderful day. You can leave your comments. I always go back and try to answer these later on. So if you have any questions, otherwise, I will see you tomorrow on Behind the Scenes Live. And if you're looking for the next Sewing News Live sponsored by Brother, that's in two weeks on Tuesday at noon. Otherwise, tomorrow at 1.30. Have a great day, you guys. Take care and enjoy the sunshine. Bye.